Hi, Jimmy here, and today we're going to answer a question that's kind of followed me since I started YouTube a few years ago. Why are my teeth so yellow? So, these are my teeth. If you were to examine my teeth as an archaeologist or as an osteo osteoarchaeologist or osteologist, you would find a few interesting things. Um, one of which would not be the colour, because these are the colour of adult human teeth. I've got the teeth of a man in his 30s. And um, one of the interesting things you might see if you looked at my teeth was a gap here. Huh? And you might be thinking, oh, he's got a missing tooth, didn't know that. But I, I haven't got a missing tooth, really. I have all the teeth I'm meant to have, new medically. What I'm missing is an adult tooth, because this, here, just that guy, is a baby tooth. I have a milk tooth. There was no tooth underneath it when my adult teeth came in, so it's still there. And you might be thinking, why didn't you go to an orthodontist and, and get a bridge made or something? And I did go to an orthodontist, and it would have cost me hundreds of pounds to get a bridge made, which at the time I couldn't afford, it wasn't causing any harm to the teeth around it, it was healthy, it still is, it's been built up and filled, I floss. Why get something taken out of my body that's not causing harm? Uh, you would also probably notice, if you were examining me with an x-ray or looking really closely, like if you removed my skull from the mandible and turned it round, you'd see the back of my teeth. And the back of this incisor, you would see a small patch, because I had root canal on this tooth, right here. You'd also see some discoloration at the top of it from operational error. So, this guy is my bionic tooth, if you like. You'd also see a wisdom tooth. And you'd see... One early 21st century style filling in one of my molars. I like sweets. But, what you wouldn't see is any unusual discoloration. Certainly not for somebody living in my place and time. I am living in the United Kingdom in the late 20th and early 21st centuries. It's pretty much a given that I drink a lot of tannin-rich substances, that is, cups of tea. And I've got a cup of tea on the go right now that is almost certainly helping with filling in the gaps between my teeth with some rich brown hues. But a little bit of brown in between my front incisors is a very, very, very small price to pay for delicious cups of tea and coffee, which I enjoy and which improve and enrich my life. And they're not really causing any harm. Like, my teeth are fine. I've got really strong teeth. But they're not as white as they could be. That is certainly true. And the reason they're not as white as they could be is I haven't had any cosmetic work done on them. And cosmetic dentistry is a very, very old discipline. We have people from thousands of years ago who have had things put in their teeth. We have jewels set into teeth. We have gold teeth. We have teeth that have been filed. And we have teeth that have been sharpened purely for the look of the thing. There's also cultural reasons why you might modify your teeth. It might be a certain ritual or rite that you go through during some initiation or other. Whatever the case may be. People have also been trying to whiten their teeth for hundreds of years. They've done things like rub lead powder into your teeth. Do not do that. They've rubbed various pigments into their teeth. Do not do that either. They have rubbed chalk and bicarbonate of soda into their teeth. Avoid doing that unless you use a bicarbonate of soda-based toothpaste, which is still a thing. And none of it works great. I mean, bicarb might clean your teeth effectively, but rubbing chalk powder and rubbing lead powder is just not a very good idea, necessarily. Especially the lead. And you can stain teeth, you can remove the stains from teeth, but I'm not that bothered. My teeth are approximately the colour that adult human teeth are meant to be. Look at these skulls from the medieval period. Their teeth are in way worse condition than mine. They're worse colour. They are ground flat because these people have been eating bread and flour filled with grit from the grindstones that hasn't been properly filtered out. And they were probably living in absolute agony. Whereas I can do mental stuff like this. So I'm thanking my lucky stars I don't have 
teeth worn flat from gritty, gritty, gritty bread. I also don't have any rotting issues, I don't have any real cavity issues, I'm pretty happy with my teeth as they are, but people in the comments often say, why has this guy got such white teeth? Uh, why has this guy got such yellow teeth? And I could have whiter teeth. There are now operations and there are now procedures that exist that would allow me to have super white teeth, that would give me the Hollywood smile, but I don't consider white teeth an aspiration. Many people do. If you are really unhappy with your teeth and you hate the way your teeth look and you dream of having a lovely white smile, then that's perfectly fine. I'm not here to judge. That's totally reasonable. It can be really difficult to accept the fact that as we age, our teeth will look yellower, they will look smaller, they will look more drawn away from the gums, and they'll look further apart. And that's difficult to accept. But it is natural, as our teeth get older, for the enamel to thin. Your teeth has a, a coating of enamel over the yellowy dentine inside, and I, genetically, have thinner enamel than many people. If I press my tooth to the backs of my teeth, you can see the tongue through the teeth sometimes. And as I get older, my teeth are going to get narrower. They're going to get narrower because that enamel at the very edge is going to wear down. And the enamel on the biting edge, biting surface, is going to wear down. Indeed, I had a chip in this incisor when I was 18. It's now completely flat and sharp as a razor because I have bitten through the chip and it's worn down. Dental attrition happens. Attrition is a natural part of having teeth. Our teeth don't constantly regrow. We're not, we're not, you know, constantly chewing the cud like certain other animals do. But it's true, I could get a dental veneer. And the dental veneer has existed since the 1920s. I didn't know this. I thought that they were more recent than that. I don't know why. But I, I assumed that a dental veneer was like a thing that happened in the 70s and 80s. But no, the tech's been there since the 1920s. A man called Charles Pincus invented them in, I think, 1928. He was a dentist in, guess where? California. Yes, he was a Hollywood dentist. And originally they were invented so that you could change someone's appearance without them having to wear, like, false teeth on screen. You could apply this veneer over their teeth. It would change the appearance. They could take them off, go home, and then, you know, live their lives. By the late 1930s, he was developing more permanent veneers. And then in the 1950s, there were experiments with things like acid etching your teeth. If you've ever plastered a wall, you know that you need to key the wall. You need to make a rough surface so that the plaster will bite into it. And you need to do the same with teeth. You need to key that tooth so that the veneer will, haha, bite into the tooth. So it's gripping it. And they do that with all sorts of things. They can do it manually with, like, basically little mini abrasives that abrade the surface of the tooth, which if that's giving you the shivers, yeah, me too. And they can also do it with things like um, acids. They can acid etch your teeth, and if that is giving you the shivers, then yeah, me too. And that's basically why my teeth are so yellow, to answer the question at the start of the video. I don't want any of that done to my teeth, and they're perfectly healthy. But they then basically stick the veneer onto your teeth. And you can get veneers that last for 10 years, 20 years, you can get veneers that last for 6 months, you can get veneers that last for 24 hours, depending on what you need. And it makes your teeth look white. But your teeth aren't white. As we know, your teeth are yellow in the middle with this kind of translucent, pearlescent enamel over them that thins over time. Your teeth are still that. The veneer, however, is white. So... That's not really whitening your teeth. Is there another option? Yes, you could use whitening strips. Whitening strips, basically you apply them over your teeth and then they chemically whiten the surface of the tooth using things like hydrogen peroxide, bleach, basically. If you're a peroxide blonde, you have bleached your hair with this hydrogen peroxide solution. That's what a lot of whitening strips do. They bleach your teeth white. It can damage the tooth when you remove the whitening strip, so it's not perfect, but it gives you whiter looking teeth. It's not permanent, you have to reapply it. Like I say, it can cause some damage to your teeth over time if they're applied the wrong way, if you use unlicensed products, if your dentist is inexperienced with the etching, that can also cause damage. I read a rather unsettling article where it says that some people have 30% of the surface of their tooth damaged beyond, like, beyond 
beyond, like, not beyond repair, but, you know, damaged to the extent that it needs repair because their inexperienced dentist has done too much of the etching. So it's a scary old thing to just have slightly whiter looking teeth. And if your goal is to have a Hollywood smile and you are genuinely really upset with how your teeth look, again, I am not judging you. Go for that thing. Do the thing that makes you feel good in your body. That's great for you, and I hope that it's a lovely thing for you. But I don't need it. My teeth are fine. They are healthy. They are strong. I'm not missing any of them. The only real issues I get with them are occasionally my wisdom tooth flares up. And if that gets worse, maybe I'll get it taken out. But I'm fine. Alright? My dad had really bad teeth because he didn't go to a dentist for ten years, and he had really thin enamel on them, so his teeth were really small and really narrow, and they weren't, they weren't great at their job. Mine are really good at their job, and I don't need them to look different to how they look now. So, compared to archaeological teeth, my teeth are really good. I have healthy gnashes. We also have the perception, the modern perception, that I am a Brit, and therefore I have bad teeth. Your teeth aren't white, therefore they're not right. But this is an interesting error in, in perception, because Brits, on average, have much, much better teeth than Americans. Americans tend to have more missing teeth than Brits in adulthood, and one reason for that is the NHS. If I need it, I can access an NHS dentist. I could I could go to an emergency department at a hospital or at a dentist's surgery and say, I need emergency dental treatment, I can't afford to go private, and the NHS would eventually get round to me. I might have a bit of a wait, I might be in some pain, but eventually I would get free dental health care, or as near as damn it free, in emergency circumstances. It's really hard to get that treatment in the USA. So an awful lot of people either don't have a dentist and they rely on a dental plan in their, in their workplace, they rely on their job providing them dental care, which is mind-blowing to me, that Simpsons episode where Homer needs to get a dental plan in his new work contract so that his daughter can have braces, that, that blew my mind when I realised what that was all about, I had no concept of that. Or people just go without dental care. Or they go to unqualified or underqualified or inexperienced dentists. And the NHS isn't perfect, and a lot of people struggle to get on NHS waiting lists for dentists, but at least it's here, and it's been here for 60 years now, so, well, longer than that, 70 nearly. 75? Whenever. 75, let's call it 75. But that's not a system that exists in the USA. Now, why does that make people in the US think that we've got worse teeth than them. Well, again, the Hollywood smile thing. The Hollywood smile is an American aspiration. You too could look like your fellow American citizens who are making it big in Hollywood by getting these new American-invented dental veneers that have become available right now. It's just before World War II, right? There's lots of this aspirational feeling. There's during World War II, the economy is getting better and better and better. More films are being put out. More people are appearing on the covers of magazines. Lots of big white smiles all over. And that becomes a very aspirational thing. Whereas during World War II and after World War II in the UK, we have things like rationing. We have the NHS appearing. Now it's not, hey, you could have this amazing Hollywood cosmetic smile. Now it's, hey, you don't have to have all of your back teeth taken out anymore, just in case. You can get dental care on the NHS for free at the point of use. Sounds better. Like my grandparents used to tell me stories of having their back teeth removed when they turned 18, or when they turned 21. As a, as a 21st birthday gift, you get all your teeth removed. Because you will have problems with your teeth. And in the 1930s, that means you pay through the nose, haha, to get your mouth fixed. And that, that again, mind-blowing to me. As a, as a child of the NHS, that was incredibly alien as a concept to me. So, why are my teeth so yellow? Because they're meant to be, basically. <laughs> they're, they're meant to be yellow. They're, I'm getting older. I am a man in his mid-30s. My teeth are going to start getting yellower at this point. Um, the enamel is going to start thinning. My stem cells aren't going to start renewing as much as they did. This is the process of aging, and I have to either be comfortable with it, or I have to rage against the machine that is my body. And I ain't got time for that. I'm self-employed. 
So, I'm uh, not sorry if my teeth offend you, but thank you very much for being here, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, I hope there were some interesting factoids. If you have any fun dental stuff that you want to share in the comments that's not going to make me feel too icky when I read through them, then by all means share your dental stories away. And yeah, if you want to support the channel financially, we have the, the coffee and the Patreon page in the description. If you just want to like and subscribe, that's always lovely and that's really helpful. I'd love to get the channel to 100,000 subscribers this year, so I can have a plaque here, a little silver guy just on the wall, that'd be gorgeous. So, in my theater. thank you very much once again. Tanatronissa, till the next time. Who will vote? Bye bye.